Welcome to another episode of Ladies Talking Business. I am your host, Irene Ubani, and I'm here with my co-host, Morimi Akon. And our guest for today is an astute Nigerian businessman and philanthropist. He is the founder, president, and chairman of the Kosicharis Group, an indigenous conglomerate with diverse interests in auto care and auto components, automobile sales and services, agri and agro-allied business sectors, among others. He established Koscharis Motors in 1977 and made his first million at age 24. Today, Koscharis Group is a business conglomerate with over 26 branches nationwide. He is no other person than Cosmos Maduka. Thank Alain. you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting certainly, you guys. Yeah. Certainly. Thank now you. tell us, who is Cosmos Maduka? I think it's as simple as you have explained it. Um, a young man that lost his father at the age of four. Uh, life gave me no chance for success. Um, many times I try to tell my story, it's supposed to be inspirational, but sometimes it could also be intimidating to a lot of young people. A young man without a formal education, and um, after the death of my father, before the Civil War, <clears throat> life was so hopeless. Um, it was a question of survival. Um, Sometimes I, I don't want to tell the story because he, he can become emotional and break down because we mm. ate everything that moved, uh, everything that fly except an airplane, you know, with wings was a food. Anything with leaves, we just give it a good. If he ate it and he's still alive, we will try it. It was survival. Um, um, I did everything I can to survive, but uh, my mother was a godly woman. It's my angel. I, um, I miss her, who held me and looked me straight into the eyes and said, look, you can go places in life. So my mother discovered that, there, that entrepreneurship is in my DNA and actually inspired me for greatness. And I truly believe my mother, and I live the rest of my life from that time with optimism. Always believe no door closed before me, and when I get to any door, it will open. Um, at the age of seven, under eight years, I came to Lagos to work for my uncle, who sleeps on the balcony in his uncle's place in uh, Briefy Street in Papa Road. Our store is at Uyumbo bus stop at uh, Griffith Street, 88 Griffith Street. I slept in a shop without window, uh, no air conditioner, uh, no bathroom, you know, lock myself up there. Uh, it's something that is really, you know, it's, it's not human to do that, mm -hmm. but it's about survival. Yeah. Um, I believed in myself, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people keep on say, you know, say they suffer and things like that. Nothing have ever been achieved. Shakespeare says something that is very interesting. He says, sweet are the users of adversity. Use your adversity. When life throws everything at you to make you lose hope, if you are truly an entrepreneur, that's when your DNA adrenaline will be released in you. Mm -hmm. You begin to have uh, creative thinking mm -hmm. on a way to come out of the problem, which is what innovation is all about. I mean, I know you also sold Akara at some point. Yeah. Or... That's correct. That's, uh, that's why I say what my mother did, because uh, she will fly Akara early in the morning and uh, you know put it in a pan, and one for my senior brother to sell and one for me to sell. I would do two before my senior brother will finish one. Mothers are really the engine house of what we all become. Mm -hmm. Many times, they don't like it because a mother will tell you that if the child is bad, they say it's his, uh, his, his mother. mother. If it's good, they say it's his father. No, but the real truth is that the mother is the first pastor or a man of, a, of his own house mm -hmm. because the child that did not suck his father's breast, he's closer to the mother. Mm. They believe their mother. That confidence my mother gave me that people cannot say no to me, 
I go out to sell a color and I ask people to buy. They said no. I held their cloth. I said, you can't say no. Oh my. And the person will be looking at me. Is it by force? I said, my mother <laughs> tell me nobody says no to me. <laughs> some of them will giggle. <clears throat> and at the end, they will ask me to put some. You know, my mother made me believe that people like me and it's hard for people to say no to me. So when people are telling me no, I just think this person don't understand. Mm. I believed it innocently. And faith walk everywhere. It's not mm. really, a lot of people get the result in life and people think it's because they are spiritual. There are many spiritual people that don't get the result in life. That's why I think the one time US president said, nothing on earth can help a man or a woman with the wrong mental attitude. Mm -hmm. And nothing on earth can stop a man or a woman with the right mental attitude. So it's based on the way individual things, the belief they have of themselves is what propelled their life. So you're saying faith is an important you know, aspect of even running a business or I, I, I can tell you easily, you require three things to succeed in life. And one of them is faith. For number one is vision, second is faith, and third is courage. Courage to act. Courage is not an absence of fear, but the ability to walk in the face of danger. So faith is to believe your vision and take a step. Because you can go to school, have all the knowledge you have in this world, you know, get all the intellectual uh, uh, you, you require. Of These course. are knowledge, like a doctor who knows it is dangerous to smoke and he still smoke, is because he has no wisdom. Wisdom is action, application. When you take a step of faith, that is the only time we can say you truly believe what you are claiming. Before then, we don't really know what you believe until we see what you can do. And what you can do comes only from the faith you have. It's the things you believe that put you into action. Amazing, amazing. So let's talk about the business bit, when you went into business. Sure. So as a Nigerian, um, you were able to thrive in what some would call a challenging business environment. How were you able to do that? I know you've mentioned faith, yeah. but how else were you able to do that? Mindset is the thing I said to you about. My uncle in 1976 counted 200 naira and gave me after I'd worked for him for five and six and a half years. Mm -hmm. And um, I went with my senior brother who said I should leave this and let us go back home. And I looked at him, I said, do you have anyone to give me when we get home? He says, no. <laughs> That's part of the thing I'm telling the audience today. You don't neglect small things. Don't neglect the beginning of any small thing. Mm. Your, your, your beginning can be small, but your end will be great. Start small. Don't wait until everything works out before you take a step of faith. Mm. Um, I could have spent 200 naira in a restaurant that evening to shop goat head. That's or, 200 naira you were giving by Yeah, your that uncle. I was giving by my uncle, mm -hmm. or take pepper soup. And then now abuse everybody around me, including God. Why did he take my father when I was young? But I have a different mindset. I think differently. Okay, so my senior brother didn't see value on it. But I was excited. The mindset. My excitement is not 200 naira. My excitement is the ability to do with my life what I want to do from today. I am no mm. more under anybody's tutorage. I am now going to make out of my life what I want to do. So the excitement is that your destiny is now yeah, in your hands. Hand. Hand. The rest freedom. will be history. So, mm. and I looked my uncle at his face. I said, you know, I served you well. And I deserve something better than this. That's another thing I want to tell my audience today. That in business, you don't get what you desire, deserve. You mm. only get what you negotiated. Amazing. When you enter into a business with anybody and you didn't agree any terms, and at the end, you ask him, do I deserve this? He will laugh at you. I say, what did you deserve? What did mm. you negotiate? Mm. So in an apprenticeship system where we hail from, there's nothing negotiated. Your parents will be happy that your uncle or your nephew took you out to go and learn trade. So and I still believe that the apprenticeship system is the best way of life for young people 
but do the young people have the discipline to go through it? Because it's the best university you can ever go. Is is you will learn unprecedented discipline. Because if you if you fool around and mess up, they pack you in another one uh, trailer and send you, you back. back in the village <laughs> and you have no court to go you have nothing to protest to anybody you become mm. like area boy in the village mm. so you need to have the best of your behavior mm. praying that god will help you mm -hmm. what did i do i went to church for three consecutive days and lock off my bus shop wow. we Igbo people don't play with our business. Our business is religion. It, mm. Death or anything does not come between it. So I committed a taboo for my uncle to understand that for three consecutive days I lock up his shop. You know how you much, much you have lost okay, you know that? To get that so, back. And I was telling him, you see, I am praying to, for the success of the business. You know, all the things you have seen me do, this is the secret of how it has. He said, no, 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 it's okay. I should go and do that thing for myself. I should come and give in. You know, since I've become a religious fanatic, it will help me to go and uh, achieve all of those things that I wanted to do. So. He actually wanted me to feel frustrated. Mm. But I turned around. The little things I knew from the scripture, I said, Uncle, I served you well. I never stole from you. You should be proud of me. I was not in a nightclub. I didn't go to watch Slima. I was in church. You should be proud of what I'm doing. But if God had in your heart that you could have given me 10,000, you could have given me 20,000, mm. You didn't pay for a stock for me. Why? What do I do with 200 naira? Do I buy one carton of plugs, spark plug, and hug it in my head? That's not how they sell spear pass. Usually, mm. other boys who do apprenticeship at the age of your maturity, your boss pay for a store and then give you some merchandise with some cash to start. Mm. So I said, where do I begin? He said, I can begin anywhere I like. Mm. I said, OK. Five years from today, please listen. If you heard who I am, your head will be spinning. Hmm. That shook him. He got the message. You know, I, 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 was, I, was bef I was under 15. He couldn't understand that a young man at that age have That's such serious. courage mm -hmm. to make such profound statement. What was your mindset? Mm -hmm. My uncle said, I know you will succeed. I said, thank you. That's all I wanted from you. <laughs> Why did you treat me that way if you knew I was okay? I said, thank you. <laughs> of course, before he became late, he was an over 100,000 naira salary from me, you know, drive my car with a driver and all of those things. So Bible recorded that Jesus Christ learned obedience through the things they suffer. Nobody grow in a comfort zone. When you think everything that is sweet is good, everything that is painful is bad, it's a childish way of thinking. Mm -hmm. When you become an adult, you know that many things that are bitter are good for your life. And many things that are sweet will destroy you. Mm -hmm. They are not good for you. No. That's adult age. You begin to make decisions. Like young people, oh, I don't want to eat vegetable. Hey, remove this. You know, if you don't eat your food like medicine, you will end up eating medicine like your food mm -hmm. down the line. What guides your business? principles we see that mindset is one of them you've also talked about faith, faith yeah. but what are those guiding business principles that have i mean you got your first million at 24 and, yeah. I, and i believe and i understand that what it is now was probably what it was not um, what it was back then plus you were giving just 200 now you need so to be clear where you are going entrepreneurship is like a a journey of a voyage you could see mm -hmm. the destination but all the routes that will get you there, you may not be able to know. But mm. you can visualize where you are going. Mm. <laughs> Joseph saw himself as a prime minister in Egypt, but he, nobody showed him he's going to go inside the pit mm -hmm. where there was no bathroom, no toilet, and the process of that journey. If he saw all of that, he would say, please forget about this prime minister. But mm -hmm. that's how process of life. There's no two way about it. By 15, I wrote on top of my bed that I want to marry before 20. Wow. So I've been married for 42 years now. OK? Oh. Now, my second vision is that I will own my own car before 23. 
I wanted to have a son by 21. And then I said, by 25, I will be a millionaire. Hmm. Um, I wrote them down. Power of vision. Before I go to bed, I anoint my spirit with every one of them. Look at them and rehearse them. There was an excitement that wakes me up in the night. And if you want me to tell you one word that captioned what it takes to be a successful businessman, I will tell you is passion. Passion. Mm. Passion is the fuel for the will. When a man or a woman is passionate about the things he wants to do, he will find the willpower to do it. It's not worried. I got up in the night excited about what I'm going to do the following day. Mm -hmm. So, and I worked hard. I refused to take no for an answer. We can tell this story. People will think, oh, I was born Koshadis. No. I worked hard. At 17 years plus, before 17, I was living in three-bedroom apartment of my own, not my parents' house. Mm. Furnished with the first rush here, you know, with, a capital far, of with carpet, million. with, uh, you know, everything you require. I have deep freezer, I have refrigerator, I have gas cooker. The air condition was not in a vogue in our generation right. then. Mm -hmm. And I was ready to take a wife. And you started and with 200 naira. I started with 200 naira. And you were 17 <laughs> at this point. And I was 17. I was 17 at this point. We'll take a break now. Thank you. This has been a very interesting conversation. Where yes, you it, has, agree with it me. has been interesting. <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break. Please stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Thank you for staying with us. We've been speaking with Cosmos Maduka, founder and CEO of Coscharis Group. Thank you so much for staying with us. You're welcome, Arlene. I understand that one particular question that will be on the minds of our viewers right now is how were you able to convert 200 Naira to having 26 branches nationwide, cutting across Nigeria and Africa, and then every other thing that you're involved in, because you're also involved in agriculture. Um, people need to understand where I hail from, that we have a welfare system. Our okay. welfare system is the kind of thing I explain, your uncle will take you, train you, but whatever you are going to be manifest as a child. You don't wait, when you are 28, 30, 35, you're, if you haven't been clear where you are going, you already lost it, you are at bottom line. 86% of successful people on the world, check statistic, become who they are between the age of 12 and 26. By 27, 28, you're already struggling. You see, the rest will be history. Do they make it at 70, 80? They do, but very rare. Mm. Initially, I team up with my senior brother. He has started business before me, so I contributed 200 Naira, and we worked together. Within six months, we differed in ideology. I've always questioned status quo that things can be done better. And they mm. thought of I am course. too, I make too much argument. Sometimes my mother tell me that, you know, why do you think you are the most intelligent person? That each time you keep doing as it were, if every villagers are foolish and you are intelligent, you are the most foolish. I say, Mommy, <laughs> you require only one cent people to help all the foolish people in the village. Mm, you can't join true. everybody because they are foolish and become foolish. So I've always challenge the way things are done. My mm -hmm. says, no, no, it's okay, I should go and start my own. So a friend of mine gave me one quarter of his store for six months, free of charge. With the little capital I have made and the little profit I have made with my senior brother, when we parted, the total was about 316 Naira. So I started working hard. I made my first breakthrough when I came to Lagos at Bulos Enterprises, Ikeja, in Olegu, to buy a motorcycle yeah. crash bar. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew that Bulos received that crash bar. And some of the things we learned from street smart, they don't teach you in college, mm -hmm. was what pays off for me. When I bought the motorcycle crash bar, I cut off the name of Bulos so nobody know knows where I get it. <laughs> <laughs> 
yes, they have control because, over that because market. that is the secret of the business. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I took a night bus to Nail. We sold it that night. Come back with a night bus. My money was able to buy double of the quantity. I came back within one week. I made about three thousand six hundred naira. This is the time they are selling wow. Mazda uh, uh, Park Finder one thousand three hundred naira. Pijot was three thousand. 600. I bought myself a motorcycle, wow. CD175. It was like seven series BMW for me then. <laughs> I have arrived. <laughs> so I went to pay for a house. I was ready for my next vision to get this in. And I started venturing into importation. Actually, if you do a good apprenticeship, you will learn the secret of trade. Mm. That, that knowledge you have if you get a young man who did seven years apprentice and you find a young man who went to college and make first degree and they give the guy that did apprentice one million and give the other person 10 million, in one year, the person that have one million will catch up with the graduate with mm. 10 million. Yeah. Mm. Because knowledge is money. Mm. He will catch up with him. Mm. But where many of the traders have problem is if your vision is limited, you start building house in Ajegule, you start buying car, you know, you are not willing to expand your business, yes. and you start mm -hmm. feeling what a man has in his pocket is more important than what is in his head. But in my own case, because entrepreneurship was in my DNA, I knew I have to compete in a structured manner. So after following the system which I was trained with, taking apprentice, when those first set of apprentices were going, I started hiring professionals to come mm. and help me run the business who had gone to university, who had the knowledge of all that I require. At the time, I was the A, A, A to Z of the A company, the backward and the forwarding agent, the damaging and managing director, the yes, accountant yes, general, yes. everything. I, I do everything myself. But I know that has limitation. So when you get these guys who came from university, they want you to give them freedom so that they can tell you, no, it doesn't work like that. You need to sell your visions to them. Regarding the fact that you were still working with your uncle at that time, were you being paid? No. <laughs> my pay is that my uncle fed me and clothed me. That's my pay. Was that the norm then? That's the norm. Okay. Our For how norm many is years? That, yeah, because they, they, they are expected that what you are supposed to be getting as a pay is what, that's why I tell you that I think he cheated me because settling me, setting me up, mm -hmm. supposed to be my pay. Mm -hmm. Supposed to be all the money should be given you every month. Maybe you fizzle it away, it's kept for you, for and you. then set you up to be able to start something. Right. Yeah. Amazing story, really, really inspiring. I what mean, do you think? It has been very You know, but well, when you were talking about you mentioned a very important um, point, mm. um, which was about your wife. Sure. And I know recently I read one of your interviews where you spoke about the role your wife played in running sure, the business. Let's sure. talk about her. Like what, tell me about the things she did in running Kostara's to date. Um, the real truth is that uh, I think I've been blessed with uh, good ladies around me. My mo coming from my mother first and my wife was Charity. That's why I so love that name. I also gave my daughter, the only daughter I have, Charity. Mm -hmm. right. um, uh, because um, she believes in me, you know, it's also that people need to be convinced on what they want to do. Um, if you think about favor, she did me a favor by marrying me. Because you were broke at when, the time. When I, when I approached <laughs> her, my pocket was empty, but my faith was full. Mm -hmm. So many times, it's not the size of She's your pocket. She's a woman of vision. <laughs> but she could see ahead. She bought into the vision. Actually, her parents thought she was insane that made her uncle shot me three times. Like gunshot? Gunshot and say oh he will God. kill me. It's like, because her parents are the, 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 the upper class in our village. It's like, it's like earlier boy going to Adenuga's house to tell him he wants to marry his daughter. <laughs> he will get the security guy to beat him to death. He will, just, he will actually think he's insane. So his uncle thought so. He said, look at what my grammar is like there today. Watch what it is in 40-something uh, years ago. I, I combined alphabet and the... Uh, so 
my ears was jamming my words. And this was a lady that was going to school. They asked her, what is your frustration? They actually thought that I bewitched her. So his uncle did oh, wow. that to protect her. Wow. So, but she believed in me. Mm -hmm. And that's why my wife is the vice president of Koshari's organization. Um, she owned the company with me because I married her when I owned nothing. So we built Koshari's together. Um, um, she can sign a check of 10 billion naira. She's, only her can sign signature alone in the whole of Koshari's. Mm. Her, myself, she has so signature. Her credit card has no limit. Oh dear. Yeah, so. Uh, but it didn't happen overnight. I taught mm -hmm. her discipline of managing money. Mm -hmm. I used to ask, ask if she need to cook soup. I said, give me a list. Oh, wow. She make a list and bring for me. I'll see she wrote engine, uh, 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 bottle yeah, of oil, oil uh, pepper, and all of this. I'll keep give her money. Next week, mm -hmm. she wants to cook. I said, where is the list? And if I see oil, I say, you bought oil last week. Why are you writing oil again? <laughs> It's only the Coca-Cola, no, but mm -hmm. all I'm trying to do is to teach her financial management, management. and mm -hmm. she learned it. Mm -hmm. She does better than myself. So you can trust her with resources and turn your back with it because mm -hmm. she's not wasteful. Now we own the company together. Uh, if I'm late today, my wife is not going through any administrative order to take over. She's just stepping into my shoe and run because she is uh, the way she is. She mm -hmm. was very active. Because I wanted a child at 21 for some reason. God knew it would be terrible for two kids having kids, you know, uh, because. Uh, <laughs> kids having kids? Yeah, you know, because uh, we would have been under 20 years because I married, I actually took her to Alta on September 23rd, 1978, when I was to be 20 in December of that year. I was under 20. So, um, and uh, the child didn't come for the next six years, which would have been terrible because. Between before I broke out in success, I also have difficulties because I lost my capital at a time. I wow. owe landlord, people owe landlord today. It's like the word come to an end. I couldn't pay for the store where I'm in, I couldn't pay for my house rent. Okay, mm -hmm. and landlord was pursuing me. So mm -hmm. I went through all of those things. Adversity is nothing but a refining fire that burns out impurities in your life. Oh. We are traveling somewhere. I said. Two more years, I will be a millionaire. My mother said, Cosmas. I said, Mom, what is the problem? She said, Please, can we go this journey in peace? I said, Mom, what's the problem? You see, you know, you boost too much. This is your boost and turn my stomach. I said, I said, Mom, I'm not boosting. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. It's okay. He understood, but I should drop. When I drop her, I will continue. continue. He know I don't know what 100,000 is all about. And now I'm talking about 1 million. So what is this thing I'm talking about? So I doesn't want to hear it again. I stopped the car. I wind the glass down. I got close to my mom here. I said, Mom, I don't want to insult you. I didn't know anything I've said that is wrong. You taught me to be optimistic in life. Why are you changing your mind? Two more years, I will be a millionaire. Do you want to get that? I said, of course. My mother is also a very strong woman. I opened the door. She get down. I jammed the door. My wife said, you are crazy. What are you doing? I said, do you want to get down also? I drop you. <laughs> and uh, when you have a vision, you are close to a mad person. Mm. Because nobody believes you until the thing you claim become a reality. Nobody gives you a chance. So people are always willing not to be misunderstood. The first choices prerequisite is willingness to be misunderstood. Mm. Right. This has been very <laughs> informative, educative, inspiring, inspiring everything mind blowing. Good. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but thank you so okay. much for. Thank sharing you. your time and all of your wisdom with us today. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It's my pleasure. Certainly. God bless you all.